Good morning. This is going to be an in-depth guide as to how to use a dial caliper. We're going to start by going over the different kinds of dial calipers, when to use them over a ruler. I'm going to explain to you the vocabulary you need to know. It's not terrible, but it's worth reviewing. I'm going to explain what all these numbers mean, what numbers you should and should not use, as well as how to use each part of the dial caliper, and how to measure some tricky objects. By the end of this video, you should have everything you need to know to successfully use these guys. Let's get started. All right, when would we use dial calipers over a ruler? Dial calipers give you very, very precise measurements. So if you're doing something and you need a very exact or precise measurement, you'd use a dial caliper. Examples are like working with machines, things where you can't be off in your measurement by much. And if you are off, something bad could happen. Your machine could break or the part might not fit. So again, dial calipers are for very precise measurements uh, where things need to be very exact. I have a few different types of calipers here. This guy is not a dial caliper. This is the dial. These are dials. This does not have a dial. I would just call this a caliper. It's essentially a ruler with jaws on it. See, nothing special there. Uh, these are good for like rough woodworking. Um, you just can't get super precise measurements with them. Now, if you're in school, this is probably the dial caliper that you have. These are fine. Uh, they're cheaply made. They sometimes have problems, but they work for your purposes probably. The downside of these... Um, you have two sets of numbers. You have the big set and the small set. Big set is inches, the small set is centimeters. The dial only correlates to the inches. So if you're trying to read something in centimeters, you can only read up to what the point something centimeter. Uh, you can't use the dial, it's not accurate. You can use the dial when you're working with inches because that's what it is synced to. So you just have to be aware of that when using dial calipers like that. These calipers are super nice. You can see they have two indicators or two needles. Um, the black needle points to the outside numbers and those correlate to my inches. The red indicator or needle points to the red numbers and that correlates to the centimeters. These guys, a little bit better quality, also a little bit more expensive. Um, in the end, hey, all of these are gonna work. Uh, these are best, these are okay, this is decent. Here's the vocab. I'm assuming most people know how to read this number. This is what, 123? This is the hundredths place, tens place, ones place. When it comes to dial calipers, they usually only go to six inches. So we're never gonna have a hundred inch reading or a 10 or 20 inch reading. So we're really only dealing with about four place values. Now, I'm gonna hit the right side of the decimal point pretty hard. So this is our tenths place, hundredths place, and thousandths place. When you're reading numbers on the right side of the decimal point, you read it just like you would any other number from left to right, and then you say the place value of your last number. So let's look at this number. What is this? It's an easy one. It is four tenths. We wouldn't say 0.4 tenths. We just say four tenths. What is this number? Read it from left to right. It is 45. The place value of our last number is what? hundredths. So this is 45 hundredths of an inch. What is this number now? It is 456. Place value of our last number is thousandths. So 456 thousandths. Now let's add in this number. We have three inches and how many thousandths? 456 thousandths. You can sometimes shorten thousandths to thou. Uh, if I'm being completely honest with you, I'll never say 456 thousandths. I'll just say 3.456 inches. Next, we're gonna go over what numbers go to what place. We're gonna start by ignoring the dial and just looking at these numbers. Remember, we're not going to look at the centimeters when our dial only has one needle because the needle correlates to the inches. So, I call these big numbers and small numbers. The big numbers are like this zero, this one, this two. The small numbers are the numbers that are a little lower. They're also a little bit smaller. Those correlate to your tenths of an inch. So big numbers, the ones that are raised up, zero, one, two, three, those are your whole inches. Those go in your ones place. The small numbers are your tenths of an inch. Next, 
The other two numbers are just whatever your dial reads. So if your dial uh, is pointing to, let's go that right there, real quick, you're not going to read the arrow end, you're going to read the skinny end of the indicator or the needle. Sometimes people think, oh, arrow points to that. Nope, don't look at that. I wish they didn't even put it there. Look at the skinny part. So what is that pointing to? It is pointing to the 20. What does that stand for? Uh, it doesn't stand for 20 hundredths. It stands for 20 thousandths. So if our dial said 20, our number would be number point number two zero. That's what that would mean. We'll get more practice with this in a second. So again, our big number, zero, one, two, or three, is gonna go before the decimal point. Put a decimal point, the tens place is the little numbers in between the big numbers, and then the last two numbers are exactly what the dial reads. Now, let's say the dial is like in between two lines. At that point, it's in between thousandths of an inch. I'd say just pick one. If it's dead in the middle, I don't know, go bigger or go small. It doesn't matter. At that point, you're like literally splitting human hairs. So whatever you pick is probably good enough. We're going to get to how to actually measure things with the calipers in a second. But first, I just want us to go over reading the dial caliper as you can't accurately get good measurements if you don't know how to read it. Um, so here's just a random length. Let's think about what uh, this dial caliper reads. We're going to start with our whole number or our big number. So what big number can we see? We can see a zero. We can also see a one. We can't see the big two, so it has to be one inch. Where's my Sharpie at? Here it is. So we know we are at, our big number is one. Put our decimal point there. Now, how many tenths do we have? Tenths are our little number. We can see here's one tenth, here's two tenths, and it's a little bit past the two tenths. You're only going to write the 10th, which you can see the line to the right of. That didn't make any sense. Here's what I'm talking about. I need to be very, very precise with my pointing here. So this line right here goes to the two. This line right here goes to the one. If we can see this line to the right of the two, it is going to be two tenths. If, so, so far we have one whole inch, 1.2, because we can see the two and the line to the right of it. Now we read our dial and that gives us the other two numbers. So what does our dial read? It's reading 30 and it's really close to 31. We're gonna round up and call it 31. So this caliper currently reads 1.231. I would just say 1.231 inches. If you wanted to use this vocab, what would you say? You'd say it's one inch and 231 thousandths. Let's do another one. This one's actually important, so don't skip it. We're starting with our whole numbers. We can see zero, one, two. Those are our big numbers, so this is two inches and some change. So this is, I'm gonna write this underneath it, two point something. What is that something? All right, let's look at this. We can see one, two, three. Let's write three. No, don't write three. Why can we not write three? Or remember, you have to see the line to the right of the three. Oh, that was gross. You have to see the line to the right of the number to, to, to jot down that number. So here we can see the two and the number, the line next to it. We can see the entire three, but we can't see the line next to it. So we can't write it. So currently this reads 2.2 something. This will make sense when you read or when we see what the dial says. The dial says what? Here's 80, here's 85, 86, 87. The next two numbers are 87. Eight, seven. And 87 is really close to 100. So that would make sense that we would be able to see most of the three, sort of like on the clock. When the clock reads 255, the hour hand is really close to the three, but it's not quite there. Same deal here. 
We can see most of the three, but we can't see the entire three, so we are at 0 0.0287, which is really close to three tenths, but it's not quite there. All right, let's get into how to use this caliper accurately. We're gonna start real simple and measure uh, the distance between here and here. What kind of jaws are we gonna use? We're not gonna use these jaws, we're gonna use the outside measuring jaws. Why? Because we're measuring the outside of something. So you're going to draw those jaws apart with your thumb wheel, pull them apart, and you're going to stick your object in between those jaws and push it closed. Now you're not gonna force it, you don't wanna break this, you just push it up there until there's enough pressure to hold the object for the most part. Now, you can either keep the object in there and get your reading, or if you don't want the object to be in there, here's what you need to do. You need to tighten this wheel over here. That locks down this so that whenever you take the object out, um, your dial doesn't move. If you don't do that, here's what will happen. See, currently our dial is at, what, 33? If you're sloppy and you take the object out of there, you saw that dial move everywhere. Um, so our our measurement will not be accurate in that case. So, put your object in there, cinch the jaws shut with a little bit of pressure, tighten this down, and then you can pull your object out, or you can just leave it in there. Now, what does this dial caliper read? How many whole inches do we have? That's one. How many tenths can we see? We can see one, two, three, four, five. So we have one point five. What does our dial read? It reads 34 and a half. Let's round up to 35. Three, five inches. So the distance between here and here of this wooden block is 1.535 inches or one and 535 thou or thousandths of an inch. Pretty easy, right? It gets a little trickier. Let's say I wanted to measure the distance of uh, from here to here, basically. And I chose this for a reason. You're gonna notice with your jaws, you have uh, parts where the jaws are touching and then parts where they are not. If you try to measure an object in the very back of the jaws, you'll get a different measurement. Look at my dial, it's at just past 30. You get a different measurement than if you measure it at the tips of your jaws. And that's pretty significant. 30%, that's like a 50 thousandth of an inch difference. That's a problem. So when you're measuring objects, don't jam them back to the base of the jaws because there's this gap back here. Your measurement will be inaccurate. It will be wrong. Instead, place your object right at like from here to here is fine. Now I'm gonna tighten this down just so I don't lose anything. What does this dial caliper read? How many whole inches do I have? Zero point. Well, how many tenths do I have? Look, I can see that four, but I'm not gonna write it. Why? Because I cannot see the line to the right of the four. So it is going to be 0 0.3. What does my dial read? It reads 75, let's call it 75. 75. So this is just 375 thousandths of an inch uh, in what width? Uh, this, this is going to be a quick one. We're going to measure the diameter of this brass rod. What is it? It is 0 0.251. And that's pretty good. I bought this. This is quarter inch rod. Um, that means either the calipers are only off by a thousandth of an inch or more than likely the rod is off by a thousandth of an inch, which is perfectly fine. All right, now you're not always going to measure solid objects. Sometimes you're going to be measuring objects that are rubber or that are foam, something that you can squish. And that's a problem because let's say I wanted to measure the thickness. This is tire tread. I'm going to push those jaws up to the rubber. I'm going to apply some pressure and that's pressure and I'm going to let go. Look at that dial. Look at how much that dial's moving. Now, what is happening there? I'm compressing the rubber, and when I let go, the rubber is uh, unpressurizing, expanding. Whenever you're measuring squishy objects, just apply enough pressure so that the jaws touch. Don't crush the object. 
just push the jaws there until they touch. Now, what does this read? This is reading 0 0.252 inches or 252. No, I was wrong. 200 and 57 thousandths of an inch is the measurement of this tire tread. Now we're going to talk about these guys and this guy down here. These guys are your inside measuring jaws. They are used for measuring the insides of holes. This is a, a pin to a handsaw. Let's say we wanted to measure the diameter of this hole. We would not want to use the outside measuring jaws. We could measure the outside diameter of it, but not the diameter of the hole. For that, we have to take these inside measuring jaws, insert them into the hole, and then pull them apart. Now I like to rotate the object and take this measurement a couple times to make sure I'm not off because um, I, I could take a weird measurement. So here I'm getting like 85 to 90 ish. That looks like an average measurement. I'm going to cinch this guy down. All right. What is the measurement of the inside of that hole? It is zero point. You might say two, but we cannot see the line to the right of the two. So it's actually 0 0.18. What is that? 0 0.185 inches is that reading. Now let's say we wanted to measure the depth of this hole. How deep does it go? You, you can't really use these jaws very well. You could maybe say, eh, I'm guessing the hole is about that deep, but that's a guess. We don't want to guess when we need to take very precise measurements. So there's actually a tool down here. Um, there's this little pin or blade. I actually ground this down uh, because the problem that you run into out of the box, these calipers uh, only give you this little, I don't know, stub. Uh, and then it starts, the blade starts to get thick, and sometimes you, uh, you can't get to the bottom of your hole. So I just took it to a grinder and made the skinny part longer. I just took off material. You don't have to do that, but uh, you can if you need to. To use this side of our calipers, you take that skinny part, you insert it into the hole, and then you push your caliper down until it is flush with the top of your hole, and you take it out. Then you read your dial caliper. What does it say? It says 0 0.3. We can see that line to the right of it, and it is 0 0.3. All right, this is a good one. What is in my what is in my hundredths place? Do we have a number? No, we don't. This is actually 0 0.303. This is pointing to three thousandths. Here's one thousandth, two thousandth, three thousandth. I'll write that down. So the depth of our hole here is 0 0.303 inches. All right, that's all we got.